small carrier from the big green. That, and we expect to see a great variety of formations from Dartmouth team. Rarely would they line up in the same formation on two successive downs. That, of course, makes the defense adjust their pattern to meet the threat of whatever the strength of the formation used. So it's second down, about six on the 26-yard line. It's back to the two well, he doesn't get much. Pulled down by Kent Van Horn, defensive right tackle, number 73. Well, this is the fifth meeting between these two schools. The first time they've met in 32 years. In 54, the midshipmen exploded for 42 points in the final quarter to win 42 to 7. In the series, which began, by the way, in 1929, maybe you can see this one thing is going to tie it. Dartmouth has yet to score its first football win over here. That's kind of a surprising thing, considering the long and great football tradition of Dartmouth College. Third down. Gavinelli spirals it off to the 30-yard line. It's completed, but it's short of the first down. Horton did a good job of making the reception. Should have moved it a little bit further down the field. You always want to run that hook pattern when you've got the first down yardage. So that was about a yard and a half short by Morton, the receiver. Mark Furley dropping back into the deep spot. He's a great defensive football player and a great all-around football player. Kevin Griffin on the punt. Gets a good kick away, carrying down to a fair catch at the 34-yard line by Mark Furley, a senior out of Cumberland, Maryland. And the midshipmen will take over the football after holding that hook in three plays. You know, there was quite a bit of action last night, but I think two games of real significance. Uh, they were quite exciting, really. Air Force defeated Utah 45-35, but boy, is that misleading. Air Force, believe it or not, was behind at the half 35-14. And the Falcons came back to score what had to be a very thrilling victory. And of course, they're looking forward to Navy next week, hosting that game at Colorado Springs. And you'll see it here on the Freedom Football Network. One other score that I think was quite a surprise, surprise to me. Colorado State beating BYU by three, with Vitello getting three touchdowns in that game after having a frustrating afternoon against the Falcons. And here it is, Chuck Smith. Wow, what a late drive up to the, uh, almost the 45 yard line. He'll be the first down as Jeff Lee brought him down. Very good lead, very good lead block by Brennan, as you can see him pulling out number 65. Leading Smith up through the hole. He found Kaylan along the line of scrimmage, and then as Bill said, used that first to speed to pick up sizable yardage. First down on the play. Well, that has to be what the big green must stop today. This guy is number one, and if they can stop him, and they're in the game. If they can't, it's trouble all the way. And there are about nine more quick yards by Chuck Smith. 19 yards and two carries. He had 99 yards last week and only played for just barely three quarters, so he would have been a 100-yard beginner had he been in the game long enough to have accumulated yardage. So it's second down, about a yard and a half, and already Navy has penetrated Dartmouth territory. Through the middle, goes the fullback, John McKenna. Coach Tranquil thinks that McKenna is really a tough, strong, vigorous football player, and he's also an excellent blocker, which is one of the reasons that Smith always has some daylight to run. McKenna knocks him out of the way. Kevin Boss has gone in to tie in with uh, Mike Ray on the opposite side. The pitch goes to Chuck Smith once again. Turns up field and he's still in the 38-yard line. Tom Ramsey, number 79, making the stop along with Rob Condy, who came up from the right cornerback position. Good defense for Justin Perry Dartmouth. Uh, they will change their defensive front all the time. Basically, they're a five-man line, but they will go into a 4-4. That will get them one more man close to the line of scrimmage to defend with a little greater impact against Smith. Second down. Ball in the 38. Navy driving towards the bottom of goal here in the first quarter. No score. Chuck Smith on the puck. This is dangerous. Down to the 20. 
He could go. He is down on the six-yard line. Saving the touchdown was number 22, Scott Russell. Well, the one missed uh, tackle is why the play went so well. And Steve Smith get the ball on the pitch. He sees the defense, cuts up field, and the missed tackle right there enabled him to continue downfield. Then he turns on the speed and avoids another tackler. Finally, it is nipped from behind on the side, but he's made a sizable gain on the play. First and goal to go. Fullback McKinnon gets it down there. Fairly close, about the two-yard line. Mike Campanelli, number 24, makes the stop. Maybe the offensive line is doing a good job of getting off with the starting card and leading the defense to the punch. John Smith, it apparently, is out of the lineup. Rick Rosano with him. I talked to uh, Red Romo, the trainer of Navy, and John Sniffin. Sniffin has a finger in his eye, but he'll be back in action shortly. Gee, get it out. <laughs> I love it. And here is Chuck Smith, and he is very right the line of scrimmage. Nigel Eckerman, the right linebacker, number 55, and number 58 calling off the last guy. But the one that made the initial penetration. And this next snap will be John Jack and fighting for Dartmouth if uh, they should stop the Navy. First them to a field goal that will give them a measure of not a good for the defensive confidence. Third down, and goal to go. Chuck Smith, great drive, puts it at the one. Nigel Ackerman, however, made the stop. Pretty good, the big green line, credit for this. Stopping maybe three times inside the six. A great defensive penetration by McBride and Muehlhauser, and also by Ramsey, and followed by the linebackers as we take a look at it. Burn hands the ball off. And up in the air goes Smith, but he was met with a penetrating lineman of Dartmouth. Fourth down, and they're going to go for it. Smith, touchdown. Goes in, standing up. And that will bring the plumes out. <laughs> we're going to do some wet push-ups down there today. <laughs> Maybe many of them today. Could be. Especially with the way Chuck Smith seems to be running. Fourth down one. And Smith just as determined in his line does a much better job of taking off and stopping the penetration of the Dartmouth defenders. Von Dukas will try the extra point out of the hole of Bob Nation. It's good. Von Dukas came in the lineup last week after uh, Sunderland had missed a couple. And then the two of them had two for two, so he's three for three on his career. And it's 7 nothing with that score coming at 9 minutes and 20 seconds to go in this first quarter. The midshipmen are leading the big green to by a score of 7 to nothing. On the bench is Chuck Smith, who has just scored his touchdown. That was the, uh, really the result of a brilliant run that he made down to the six-yard line. Chuck Smith was a fullback last year, but and uh, played his role very well to Napoleon McCallum. Well, he did all the blocking that gave McCallum the opportunities to make the great chunks of yards that he made during the year. And uh, they switched him to tailback this year because Chris Tranquil felt that he had the same kind of skills that McCallum had. And so far, he certainly looked like it. He's number two in all-purpose running, number two in rushing, so far in the NCAA division statistics. Do you know who leads in that department? I'm, I'll ask you that later. Pollard. Pollard. Up to the 22, 23. The man who leads in all-purpose rushing in NCAA history is a very famous judicial figure in the United States. I now that you that is, know it, uh, <laughs> old Byron Whizzer White. You're right. When he played at the University of Colorado. And who knows? Maybe someday that will be broken by somebody like Smith. First down on the 23-yard line. Maybe stays very solid on defense. They're so big and strong. I think they can just stand off with them. Gabinelli has an open man. It's Mosier. Check that, it isn't. Well, it's Morton. 
25. Almost a first down. That first touchdown scoring drive was very impressive. Nine plays, 66 yards. It only took them three minutes and 58 seconds. Morton is a very clever receiver, Bill. He really knows how to get open, and he's got speed enough to really burn you. Through the middle, it's Torrain. Spins up to about the 37-yard line. Rick, I notice you're down in that right end zone, and uh, you're in a pretty good position to see what is happening up front on the line. Would you like to make a comment on that? The thing that impresses me the most, Bill, about the Navy defense is the way they can pursue to the ball, and Bud Wilkinson alluded to it when he said they play basic defense. They don't do a lot of stunning, but it's really a thrill to watch them to get off their blocks and slide and pursue the ball down the field. Well, they've done a good job so far. Second down and five and leading seven to nothing here with Dartmouth trying to move the ball in its own territory for 37. Here's Gabinelli, the first time he's really run outside, and that may not have been a good decision. He just didn't pull the bottom down quick enough. It was an option to pass run. The receivers were covered. He was just a count late, making up his mind to try to run with the football. Bob Plants, number 72, a senior out of Pittsburgh, was the man who made the stop on the play. And I uh, see the various formations that Dartmouth is using. That time they had a twin set. And the rollout pass. They're never in the same formation, two downs in a row. Morton is wide right. Swirk goes way out to the left. So they're trying to spread this Navy defense here in this first quarter, get a little room. And Torrain is decked before he can even get started on the draw. Looks like he may have had a mix up with his own man. Macbeth and Heron were there, but Torrain really never got started. And I think that the defensive line of Navy just simply swarmed all over them and you can see the linebacker shooting the gap coming up and he's on the draw play before it really gets a chance to organize. It didn't take the pass fake. So it brings up a fourth down. Kevin Griffin with a 33-yard average. You can hear me now, can't you? That's a nice kick in the Stations, local commercial coming up at the end of this play. Flag on the play, Bill. And Position three, coming up stations. Time. So that may nullify. Five, four, three, two, one. Here we go. Go, stations. Stackhouse had gotten the ball up to the 40-yard line, but tripping was detected on the part of Navy. So the ball has been taken back to the 19-yard line, and the midshipmen will start there, 81 yards away from the Dartmouth goal line. They crossed it once, and then seven to nothing. Six and a half minutes to go here in this first quarter. Army is leading the in the first quarter, 14 to nine. Penn State over Rutgers, 17 to nothing at the half. Penn over Columbia, 14 to nothing at the half, and Brown over Princeton, 17 to nothing at the half. Open man right there was Kevin Boss, who was waiting in place of John Smith at tight end. And uh, they took off for about 17 yards here up to about the 30 yard line. And that uh, pass fake, uh, the running fake is so effective that it freezes it out with defense. And had our fake, drew them up to the linebackers were up, and Boss was wide, wide open as he crossed the field into the open spot. Second man through is Chuck Smith. Good defensive play, however. Knocks him down. Penetration made by Chris Bailey. And number 18 in on the play was Jeff Lee. Maybe likes to have the balance between pass and run. And this, of course, is an attempt to keep that balance. And when you've got a runner like Smith, uh, rarely do you get stopped for no gain or very short gain on the play as he did that time. Second down. Will Byrne has plenty of time. Fred's it in there to his fullback, Chuck Smith. And he's up to the 44-yard line. 
a fullback, he's really a running back. He was a fullback, he did a go on. I think Bud, you pointed it out that he uh, well, had kind of a subjugated role to Nappy McCallum. Yes, but the interesting thing about him, he's the leading rusher on the team and also one of the leading receivers. And uh, that's an unusual combination. You know, everybody would like to have that balance, but Smith is a great hand man to catch the ball. He's got wonderful hands. Rich to remove the finger from John Slippin's eye because he's now back in the game. Apparently with no further complications from that, and he is playing up the tight end spot in place of Kevin Ross. He's always got a right on target. The receivers have been open, but Byrne has drilled the ball on the numbers. He's a big quarterback, 6'3", 205 pounds. He's a senior, and he's well experienced. First down on the 48-yard line. Now he goes deep. Too far, and it's almost intercepted. Mike Campanelli, number 24, was covering on the play. It was intended for Troy Saunders. Campanelli couldn't play hold. Campanelli just doesn't take the bait here. You can see the beautiful fake. Fake that cameraman momentarily. Byrne tries to drill it deep, and the ball is off, but Campanelli has got it very well covered. He did not go for the running fake. As you take a look at this offensive line coming up, Note that it's the biggest game in maybe football history. Can you believe it? Average is 261 back on the top. There's a penalty marker down as the ball is thrown to stick and he drops it. However, it looked when it was thrown as if it's going to be against the offensive team. Man illegally in motion, according to uh, referee James Garvey. Second maybe penalty. Might be declined here with that incomplete pass. It would bring up third down and 10. <laughs> Captains are Rusty Gardner and Dave Gavinelli. The officials today, as you can see on your screen, it is declined. And it is third down and 10. One half minutes to go. First quarter, three really out in front of Alan Seven. <laughs> oh, amazing how much time. Burn has, but the pass is thrown out of bounds and Jennifer Mike Ray to split in. This is his first start today. The linebacker Brooks, where uh, Gardner tried to shoot the cap, but uh, they are able to pick everybody up and kill Burn all the time that he needs. We take a look at it again. Here's Andy Mewick, I'm sorry. Andy Mewick is back. Tries to get a high kick. Uh, fair catch is called for and taken at the 15-yard line. Taken by Tim Stretch. So that means that that was going to work, but deep in its own territory. Here with 417 to go in the first quarter. and Rick Forzano back at the Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium here in Annapolis. There's a Westinghouse blimp that hangs overhead today. What a view. First down for the Big Green, Gavinelli's senior quarterback out of St. Louis sets the team, gives to Ernie Foley, good hole off the left side. And Vince McBeth, number 19, makes the stop on the play. Vince has a great and glorious career behind him and he's filling out his senior year now at the Naval Academy. See the handoff, the hole is open along the line of scrimmage. But watch the solid hit that Macbeth makes. No movement forward after he makes contact. 
He's made 20 unassisted tackles thus far. 12 assisted for a total of 32. The leading tackler on the Dartmouth team, the Dartmouth Navy team. Matt Dury swinging over to make the line on balance. Dennis Torrey once again getting it up to about the 23-yard line before he is hit. I want to say a word about Vince McBeth because I think he has a rather unusual story. Uh, first of all, he comes from Camden, Arkansas, and that uh, is the home state of Bo Coppage, Captain Bo, uh, the athletic director of the United States Naval Academy. And Strangely enough, Bud, Vince's sister is a Dartmouth graduate. She's a, a medical doctor who is now practicing in California. So he's got a kind of mixed emotions today. He certainly does. And maybe the, the McBeth family does. Third down. Well, three. Complete. And Gavin Allen just was not able to get himself set to throw. He rolled off to the left. He's a right-handed passer. You have to plant your feet, get your shoulders squared along the line of scrimmage to be able to deliver the ball well. He didn't quite get turn enough to put the pass on target. So it brings up fourth down. Griffin is in the lineup. A couple of scores that uh, we gave earlier. Let's uh, take a look at the once again. Army over Yale in the quarter in case you missed these. Clay Stackhouse has gone back into the receiving position. Oh, that was a real good kick by Griffin. He's better than his average today, considerably. And down goes Stackhouse at about the 48-yard line. So as we come into the final three minutes of this first quarter, the Navy midshipman will take over the ball, leading 7-0 over the 48-yard line. back here for the Penn Navy game later on in the season. And we have Brown over Princeton 17 to nothing at halftime score. Bill Brown puts it out to Chuck Smith. He is, but I tell you, he has got the quickest start. I'm not so sure he doesn't hit uh, a little bit faster than uh, McCallum. But it's very hard to have the blockers get in front of them if they're going to be pulling and leading because he does get off so fast. Let's watch him run and see the marvelous acceleration that he has. A little quick pass. It's really almost more of a sweep play than it is uh, a passing play. He gets eight yards so quickly. Then he just drops the ball out there and he's a little wider and we see him again, but that time he's hit behind the line of scrimmage. Nigel Ecker, number 55, makes a great defensive play. He diagnosed it perfectly and took the gamble of shooting the gap and was able to get in the path of Davis to make the tackle. At 2.31, second in the NCAA is a, a mark that the record was uh, set by Byron Hilser White 50 years ago. 2.49 is what the mark is to break. Vernon over the middle, Smith and has it, and it's a first down at the 38 yard line. And he was uh, across the needed yard for the first down. So he was positive that he could whip the ball in and burn again, put it right on the numbers. As this offensive line comes up there, let me just set them for you. Williams is 280, number 77. Brown is 255, number 65. Senator Tuttle is 240. Goldberg is 264. And Joe Brennan, number 74, the right tackle, is 275. What a pass. Right. On the money at the 22-yard line to Mike Ray making his first start today, a senior split end out of Boring, Oregon. Ray is a former enlisted man in the Navy. Some was appointed to the Academy and has become perhaps the most talented receiver. He's not very big, 5'9", 168, but he's a senior and he's an experienced athlete. Brandon Walsh has gone in at flanker for Hollinger for Navy on this first down on the 22-yard line. Quick opener, blasting through is number 23, Curtis Brown, playing in place of John McKenna, fullback. It's always good when you can substitute enough, particularly on a day when it's, it's this hot and this much humidity, keep everybody fresh by having Brown in behind McKenna. McKenna will be stronger when he re-enters the game. And we are down to the final 30 seconds of this first quarter. 
Seven to nothing, maybe out in front, and threatening again here on the 14-yard line with a second and two. Pitch to Smith. Oh, he just doesn't ever stop. Still carrying them in his back at the six-yard line. And it's a first down for the midshipman and goal to go. He's not that big, really. He's, he's about 5'9". Uh, what a set of legs. He weighs 194 pounds, old Bill, and he's built to play the game. He mentioned his legs, and that's what it takes to play this game. The leg strength is the important factor. So we're down to the last six seconds now, the clock ticking away. They will not get a playoff before the end of the first quarter, maybe leading 7-0. The midshipmen of Navy now have first and goal to go on the six-yard line of the big green of Dartmouth as we begin the second quarter of play from Annapolis. Seven to nothing Navy leading, and very nice taking throws. It is headed down on a good defensive play in the end zone. The pass was intended for Smithen and Scott Russert, number 22, came up to make the save. The senior out of Hamburg, New York. That was the tenth attempt by Byrne. As we take a look at it again, it was the run fake. It appeared that the receiver was open, but Dartmouth did a great job of defending on the play. Number 22, Russer. So it's second down. Wallace is out wide with the right goes in motion now back toward the line. Again, good thinking. And the pass is thrown to Smithen, but it's off his fingertips at the goal line. He's not being any more open than that. The pass was just a little bit behind him. He couldn't quite get his body turned to make the reception. Almost a local boy from Potomac, Maryland. And the first quarter stack shows the <laughs> dominance very clearly of the Naval Academy thus far. 146 total yards against 26. Third down. Back to Chuck Smith. He's got the speed to make it. Touchdown. What nifty running outside. Well, he was one on one with Rob Crumby, number 44, and he gave him that little juke as you saw at the three yard line and just aimed for the corner of the pile on and go. This is the same uh, forward pass play, but it's really a sweep. Fern just drops back and throws the ball to Smith as he's rolling out of the backfield, and he's got that blazing speed. He just moves so rapidly that the defensive men do not get over in front of him. They reach for him, underestimating how fast he really is. Mitch holding. It is up and good by Van Lucas. And it is 14 to nothing. And as the cannon signals the second touchdown of Chuck Smith here this afternoon, his ninth of the season. This homecoming crowd, very happy with uh, the results so far in this game as Navy has gone up uh, ahead of Dartmouth, 14 to nothing here as we begin the second quarter of play, and the hero so far, too, has been Chuck Smith. We anticipated he would have a great day today simply because he is a very consistent ball player. He's got a good supporting cast, though, as we take a look at the scoring drive. 10 plays, 52 yards in 2 minutes and 51 seconds. Smith taking it in from 6 yards away. I'm impressed, too, with uh, quarterback Bill Byrne and his poise. Uh, that he seems to really have that uh, sort of senior quality. Of course, Franklin doesn't feel that he's uh, truly mobile, but he thinks that his arm is as good as anyone that he's coached in a long time. Kenzie, back at the 12-yard line, John Fuller, number 40, makes the stop on him. The speed and uh, you have to be able to be faster than the other team or at least equal to stay in the game. Dartmouth does not have as much speed as the Naval Academy, and you've talked about how big the Navy offensive linemen are, Bill, but they're also the average about 6'5 height flies, so they're, uh, they're really tall, tall people. Say a word about the restrictions on that and going into the fleet because some of those fellows are going to have to lose some weight before they go into the fleet in the, after their senior year. 
Yeah, but now he's, oh, this is the longest one of the day, and Martin has the ball over his shoulder. He's pulled down at the 32-yard line. This straight end sophomore out of Plymouth, Michigan, was dragged down by Greg Stefanon, or he would have gone all the way. 55 yards. Take a look at it again. A little rollout. The fake of the throw short. And Gavin Ellie turns and pops it deep. And Martin is a marvelous receiver. He's got about 4'4 four, four to 4'5 four, speed. He's very mobile, and he's got a marvelous pair of hands. He's uh, going to become a great player. In fact, he already is, even though he's uh, a little of the youngster. First down on the 32, the deepest penetration of the big green so far. Trailing 14 to nothing as Ernie Terrain gets it to the 30. And Rick Porzano has something for us. How is the former Navy coach looking at this? Oh, it's a great thrill to be back here, number one, Bill, but I was watching number 25, Greg Morton, and it reminds me so much of a young man named Belitnikoff who used to play for the Oakland Raiders. He is so smooth and just has that deceiving speed and knows how to get open. To look for him to catch a lot more passes today. That's Greg Morton, number 25. And he's going out wide to the right right now. Top of your screen. And Gabinelli goes to him. Hit hard by Greg Stephanon. And Stephanon just played the ball beautifully. He timed it. The ball was in Martin's hands as we see Martin starting downfield again. A little juke to the inside, then break it to the outside. But you can see how solidly he's hit before he can put the ball away. Time here is a great, great defensive player. Time here is called by the big green of Dartmouth. Comes at 13:49 of this first half, and Navy is out in front of the Big Green, 14 to nothing. What a tranquil scene here we see at the Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium on the second. James Swirt and David Gavinelli were talking with Coach Joe Yukiko on the sideline during that time, and I'm, I wouldn't be surprised to see something happen as a result of that conversation. Swirt on the radio line is the wide receiver, and Coach Gavinelli the quarterback. Swirt in motion. Gavinelli goes down the sideline to Martin. At the 11, he's got the pass first down for the big game. Oh, I like his hands. Two new players, really a difficult man to cover. As we take a look at it, the picture now up just a little bit, but Morton just went down, take to the inside, broke to the outside. Cavanelli has the ball right out of target with good time. And Morton does know how to get open. And credit to Cavanelli on these last couple of passes. This senior out of St. Louis, who's averaging 50% on his uh, passes, has really been on target. Terrain gets it inside the 10 to about the 8-yard line. Tom Doman, Mike Herring, and Vince McBeth all there to try to make that progress stop short of the goal line. The Carter team has not been able to really move the ball on the ground, but they've kept a good balance of pass and run. The third, of course, is Gavin Ellis throwing, and Morton is the number one receiver, but you've got to keep the defense honest by mixing up the pass and the run. Let's keep an eye on Morton now because he's gone wide right. Gavinelli looks to him. Corner of the end zone. It is incomplete. Right on his tail is stepping on. A little bit hurried that time. I don't think he needed to be, but uh, I think he felt the kind of pressure and delivered the ball with what he needed to. So it brings up third down. The ball must go to the one. It is on the eight. You're thinking screen or draw here, but uh, there's not a lot of field when you're that close to the goal line. The end line really catches up with you very, very quickly. You know, last week, the big green scored on the very first play from scrimmage on a 75-yard pass from Gavinelli to Morton. So that is uh, kind of a potent combination. The timeout here has been called. Gavinelli probably wanting to talk things over. 12.23 to go in the second quarter. Navy leading 14 to nothing. 
And this is really the key play for them, so they do want to be sure that they have the best possible play call from what they learned from the press box and from the coaches on the sidelines. This telecast is an exclusive presentation of the Freedom Sports Network. Any reproduction or rebroadcast without the expressed written consent of the Freedom Sports Network is strictly prohibited. <laughs> uh, you know, there's so much spirit when you come here to, well, any of the service academies. Uh, you see the jet fighter mock-ups and models, and you see, of course, the destroyer down there. And, of course, I couldn't help but uh, be enthralled with seeing the old Navy goat roaming the sidelines, one of the great mascots in all of the tradition of college football. Next, uh, kind of a goat, but not the live kind. What do you see? A goat that has kind of been brought out of retirement, Bill. Yeah, this is number 22. This is kind of a strange story. Number 24 didn't make it, and 23 is kind of a little so they brought 22 back. So Billy's here on the sideline today. Here's a third down. Martin in the center. Gets it to about the four. He's three yards short of the first down, and Vince McBeth will be the man number 19 that you see get off of him there. And once again, McBeth did a great job. Morton was open, open short, but the Navy defense just really closed. Everyone moving to the ball and stopped him for a rather short game. All right, Jim O'Gara, a senior out of Dakota City, Nebraska, has reported into the lineup number one. And he will be kicking out of the hole with David Gavinelli. John Olson has reported in, the long snapper. And O'Gara is still looking for his first field goal of the season. This will be from 22 yards out. He kicks it left. Not good. That's a tough miss. They needed to get some points on the board. When you see some... But when you really feel a straight-ahead kicker is going to hook the ball and miss it. That's one of the advantages. Sidewinders are allowed to hook the ball at any point. But when you're kicking it straight ahead, as O'Gara does, you really rarely do miss the ball one way or the other because you're not sidewinding it. Yeah, there's no wind. Uh, you just didn't hit it right. So the ball comes out to the 20-yard line, and the midshipmen, who are leading 14 to nothing, will go to work again. The cannon back in that fullback spot. Bernie, quick toss. Completed. Seven yard gain on the play to Mike Ray. Rick, you have something for us? Well, I agree with uh, Bud. Uh, that missed field goal, I think, really puts the pressure right now on the Dartmouth defense. Uh, this will be a key series because if Davey comes down here and scores, I think this will be a long day for Dartmouth. Second down, a long yard. Down Hall, the replacement of Chuck Smith, puts it up to about the 45 yard line. Not bad. And the same blocking pattern that works for Smith, and they cleared it off the hall here very, very well as he cuts back against the grain, reads downfield, breaks it upfield, lowers the shoulder to get the extra yardage. He was averaging 3.9 yards per try going into this game. First down on the 45-yard line, Mike Ray comes out of the lineup, and Troy Saunders is in in place of him at split end. Good faking by Byrne gives him lots of time to throw, and he has a man open at Saunders. He'll go all the way. 55 yards, and it was a picture-perfect pass. It was right on the money. Saunders didn't even have to break stride. And the push-ups are going to mount. But let's take a look at the play again, and you can see what a fine fake. That was Hall coming over the ball. Burns sets up, drills it downfield to Sanders, who has it wide open, and you can see the fine catch that he made. He only had a couple of steps on the defender, but he did have those two steps, and he takes it easily into the end zone for the score. Von Dukas is in out of the hold of uh, Mish. It was a low well snap, but Mish was able to grab it, pull it up, and it was kicked perfectly by Von Dukas. So it's 21 to nothing. Navy out in front of Dartmouth in the hopes of the Big Green scoring their first win over Navy in considerably. 
Burns really living up to his advanced spelling and makes a marvelous fake, sets up, throws. Sanders is wide open due to the running fake, and Byrne has hit 9 of 14 passes for 132 yards, and there's 10 minutes and 21 seconds remaining in the first half. He's having a great afternoon. Ball being teed up now by Navy. Bob Sunderland, number nine. I think what uh, both you and Rick said, that that was a very important miss for Dartmouth because all of a sudden, instead of having it 14 to 3 and then kicking off to Navy, maybe getting a little bit deep, to give Navy the ball on the 20-yard line and boom, the bottom hits. Chris Pollard, look at this hole. Puts his head down at the 30. Oh, he had a nice big spot to run. He had just one more step and could have written that after Burner just slightly. He might have popped it. Took the score, three plays, 80 yards. Just took a minute and 12 seconds. Green up at the 30-yard line, first and 10. Takes it to the lane, pass to Morton. Out of bounds at the 47-yard line. He's clever, he's fun to watch. Yeah, he has great speed, great hands. Bart keeper on him. And Gavin Alley, this is the same play that maybe he scored on. He's a fake. The linebackers go for the running fake. Martin is wide open along the sidelines. He jukes a little bit, but uh, he can't find much daylight after he makes the reception. Now, the pattern usually has been after a good completion like that is to go to Ernie Terrain on a run. And the pattern follows. They picked up a little bit of yardage. Uh, a seven yard game for Terrain, Rick. I just want to make a comment. Well, uh, you should have been a football coach. Craig, you're calling the plays very well. But the thing that, that does impress me about Gabinelli is that he throws the ball before uh, Morton makes his break. And that's a sign of an excellent quarterback, as Bud will tell you. Well, it's a little subtle, but it's kind of hard to see unless your eyes train for it. Good point. On the 43, second down, Gavin Elliott, quick one, going to Tehran. And it crosses up maybe enough for the first down at the 32-yard line. So it is for Dartmouth, but there's no giving up on that side of the football, even though the big green is behind 21 to nothing. And this is probably the most impressive drive that they've had, because every play that they've been in this drive thus far has been a truly successful play. There's a very rich tradition in Dartmouth football, as we all know, about 13 Ivy League championships. We've produced 49 All-America players in 105 years of football. And in the moment, maybe you'd like to recall for us some of the great coaches who've been here. First up, on the 32. Good faking by Gabinelli. And there he goes to Morton. He is wide open. He can't get to the ball. He had speed enough to be open. As you mentioned, the great Dartmouth coaches, I always think of Tess McLowry and Little Blake. Uh, and, of course, uh, Bob Blackman, who won all of those championships as we take a look at the previous play from the end zone. Gavinelli's back. Morton is open, but the ball is overthrown by just one side. And Dartmouth needed that seven points. Nine minutes, 17 seconds to go in the second quarter. And maybe is up 21 enough on over Dartmouth. But the big reason is in the territory for 32 of the second down. Once the down is terrain, goes into the line. May have started just a fraction too soon toward the line. Maybe he agrees with you. <laughs> the players always do. <laughs> they, think they got the call. So that will cost the big green five yards. Once they take the down, it will be a game of about a yard. Freddie Torrain, I think, is a good story. He's a leading ball carrier, a senior out of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and really has been one of the outstanding runners in Dartmouth football history. 
Major is going to have to go in for Morton now, number 15. And Morton's done an awful lot of running thus far today, and as human as it is, players need to be rested. Yeah, and he just might spurt right down that right sideline. He's got an alley looking left, which might be a little misdirection on his part, since he has Ranger on the right. And he's hit hard, right? As he got rid of the ball, there is a marker down at the 34-yard line. Back. And the pressure's coming, and you can see the hold on the right-hand side of the screen. The defensive lineman who was trying to drop back and go with it, was just not able to do it quickly enough. And that was Martinez who was penalized for holding. And once again, we get a refusal of the penalty, so they've had two successful penalties that won't go down in the record book. Well, it brings up a fourth down. And Morton reports in the lineup. Well, that's significant. Here they have fourth and long, fourth and about nine, and Morton with his speed, and they just trying to hit that sideline. He's been successful so far. Gabadell goes to the opposite side, incomplete. Intended for James Swope, the wide receiver, and once again, Stefanon has been doing a pretty good detective job of following his man. And a good change of pattern to throw the ball to Swirk, because I know that Navy was thinking they're going to throw to Martin. Stefanon does a beautiful job of reacting as the ball is put in the air to make the pass incomplete. In case you missed it, the uh, Air Force had to come from behind uh, last night against Utah after trailing 35-14 to 14 at halftime. He won and beat the Utes 45-35. I mention it because these two teams, Navy and Air Force, will start off next week at the Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs. Bob Smith has it off to his hall. I guess it wasn't Mitchell, it was Byrne still in there. Oh. Mitch and Byrne are very much alike. They're almost uh, the same weight, 205 to 203 pounds, and uh, they're both they have a lot of experience. Coming up at halftime, we're going to we'll present our weekly feature on the Academy experience. This week, we'll take a look at the high-tech technology of today's Navy. Talking with a few of the players who are into that, and uh, it almost boggles your mind what they are required to study. Nice pass, close right into the arms of Hall. At the 41-yard line, Will Winslow makes the stop. Well, that's the same uh, pass play that Smith has used so effectively. It's really like a sweep. Playback drops back, and then throws to the tailback, and he's just rolled out into the flat, and he's got speed enough to run by the defensive end, and cut it up field as he gets a great block from his wide receiver, Hollinger. Brandon Wattis now is put out wide to the left side with the first down. Burn off the hall. Look at the hole. They open up the hole for 10 yards. Furman making the stop. And that offensive line is becoming more effective with their blocking almost each time they snap the ball. As you mentioned, they're very big and they're very experienced. We take a look at the replay and you can see the huge hole as Hall cuts up inside and is tackled by the secondary and the linebackers after a big game. Well, he will be the heir apparent to that uh, coveted tailback roll. What's interesting, too, about as they make the measurement here is that Napoleon McAllen had uh, Chuck Smith in the backfield with him last year, and the heir apparent was Mike Smith. Well, that's a good one. And uh, Chuck Smith is very pleased about that. Rick, you have something there? Bill, you talked about Chuck Smith and Matt McCallum. There's a gentleman named Bert Little who's assistant equipment man for Navy. He said that before Matt left, he gave Chuck Smith a uh, blood transfusion. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> All right, and in that lineup is Don Hall in place of uh, Chuck Smith right now, getting a chance to work. Coming back is Hollinger. Hollinger gets it to the 44-yard line before he's pulled down by Rusty Gardner and John Furman. This is the first misdirection play that we have had by either team. Burn drops back. Hollinger comes on the reverse. They do a good job of blocking. He doesn't quite get the corner, corner turn clean. He does make some yardage as he turns up field, but 
Dartmouth defensed it reasonably well. Second down. Six and a half minutes to go here in the second quarter. Maybe out in front with a commanding 21 to nothing lead. That was a big game. Oh, what a hole opens up on the guard of McKinnell. And McKinnell is still at the 24 yard line. Scott Russell coming up to save the touchdown at the 22. Boy, that maybe blocking is something, isn't it, bud? It's marvelous. And Byrne did a very good job of taking it on the play. The Dartmouth team really thought that he was going to run a play action pass, but he gave the ball to McKenna as he almost was past him, and McKenna found that great, great daylight in the line. 21 yards on that play as Navy is starting to reel off big chunks now at the 24. First down. Right back is to McKenna. Incomplete. Intended for number 44, Tony Hollinger. It's a veteran backfield that uh, started. Bill Byrne, John McKenna, and Tony Hollinger, all seniors. And they're all relatively big. Uh, when you have a 6'3", 205-pound quarterback, as Byrne is, that's very unusual. McKenna's not that tall. He only weighs 192. And Chuck Smith, 195. They're big, fast, experienced. Second down. Big to Smith. Now the ball is thrown to Smith. And he's down on the 17-yard line. Rusty Gardner and Jeff Lee making the stop. I always thought that's been a good play, bud. The fake from the man in the I think it's one of the toughest plays to defense in all of football because you think to the ball carrier, and now the defense thinks he's no longer part of the play. Then he just turns around and Burton puts the ball right on the numbers, and he's back in the play. It really is a very, very difficult play to defense. And everything psychologically is going against that play for the defense. Third down, about two. Oh, look at this. Smith, once he starts that gallop of his, he just sees that last chalk stripe and gets it down to the 10 yard line. Let's take a short pause for station identification. This is the Freedom Football Network. Well, the midshipmen have first down on the 10. And I know that Coach Crank was very pleased. They've had 11 turnovers in their first three games, and they have not turned the ball over yet. So that's making him feel that the coaching staff has done an effective job. And if Murphy's Law is correct, it'll happen right here after you mention <laughs> it. normally does, and there it is. It is. <laughs> and it's recovered by Dartmouth. And that's the way to stop the drive. We'll take a look at it again. There's a little cross back. Smith moves to the outside, but you can see the tackle knock the ball loose and uh, Brett Matthews, number 40, was the one who got it, and he did a very, very good job of driving his fist through the ball and knocking it away from Smith. Mary's not going to like you, Brad, for saying that. <laughs> I was complimenting him. <laughs> and he put the old hex on him. First and ten on the set. Down the end zone, Gavin out of Morton. And Morton is still at the 22-yard line. But I'll tell you, he's dangerous. He, well, he's got about 125 yards here in this first half, sir. Yes, and the uh, Navy the defenders are wisely giving him some room because he's got that great speed. And a lot of people that can run 4 4 4 5 as he can and can do it consistently. So they've got to respect that speed and keep him in front of them. And when you can run those little clever hook patterns, he's uh, very easy to get open. He's gaining 127 yards with seven receptions thus far. Good, first down. Gabinelli on the short fake, then goes to Martin Long, and he's got it. <laughs> that is a terrific job of concentration. He had to turn one way and then back the other when he saw where the ball was. Great play. He's truly as fine a receiver as we've seen this season. Got the speed, got the hands, he's got it all. 47 yards more. And again, this is good play action. The fake of the short throw, and then the long throw. And what a beautiful job that Martin does of watching the ball into his hands. It was almost a little too long, but he did a great job of concentration to make the reception. 
Ernie Sorang is met there by number 75, Enoch Blazes. Middle guard out of Springfield, Illinois, number 75, and that's all the terrain can get at 31, one yard. And it's very tough for the Dartmouth team to run against the big, strong Navy defenders. A couple of more scores in the games that you're interested in. Georgia leading Little Miss at uh, the fourth quarter, 14 to 10 in the close one. LSU over Florida at the half, 21 to 17. And Nebraska surprisingly having a struggle against South Carolina, 13 to 7 at the half. Second down. Gabinelli, but he overthrows his man, James Swirk. That's one of the few times that uh, Navy has come with the blitz, and I think that Gabinelli felt it and got rid of the ball very quickly so that he did not run any risk of being sacked. With 58 seconds left to go in the game between Georgia Tech and North Carolina, get this, the Tar Heels have 21, and the Yellow Jackets 20. Unless there were two field goals, somebody feels bad about that makes extra points. <laughs> Third down and nine. 323 to go, second quarter, and maybe leading, but Dartmouth wants to get on the board in this first half, and the man is open, but the pass is just overthrown. James Swirk is down in the end zone, stepping on his head, and now it brings up fourth down. Marker down. A little discussion by the officials. Very important call here. Yes, it is. They have it against whom? No, it's against the defense. And we can see the little push. Mm -hmm. Stepping on right there at the last moment, and uh, definitely interference call correctly ruled. And believe it or not, the sun is coming out after a rather dismal, rainy, grizzly morning. We have a bright sunshine coming out here. Uh, Johan, I must say, sticky afternoon. First down for Dartmouth at the 15-yard line. Well, the big green got it down there close to about the three. Missed a field goal, however, earlier in the second quarter. And that was a bit of a frustrating thing because it came with a 14 to nothing score, and it could have been 14 to three. Maybe then converted three plays later to make it 21 to nothing. But now the big green is down there again with a first down on the 15. Terrain has a blocker. He also gets some hits. <laughs> Even if Blazes, number 75, closed that hole so fast. Let's take a look at it again, and you can see the handoff. Let's go! It appears he's got a little bit of room to run the watch right here. Beating on Blazes right at it, and the power to knock the ball carrier back. Second down. The ball is on the 13. I don't think uh, Joe Yutike has a whole lot of faith in the field goal kicker. He missed from the 22, and uh, he's now over three on the season, so they're hoping to get the six. Into the end zone, Swirk is there, but the pass is overthrown. And once again, Danny came with the blitz, and the blitz was effective. He evidently had to throw the ball before he was ready. minutes to go in this first half. Interesting interviews coming up at halftime, uh, hopefully with the coaches and also with Admiral Trost. And uh, Rick, I know you have a lot more for us at halftime. Bill well, Gabinelli really is a fine-looking quarterback, and he has to do it himself because uh, Dartmouth is not going to be able to run this football on uh, Navy's defense. Well, we've got two plays. The punch it in from the 14. You have to get it actually to the five for the first down. His arm was hit as he threw the ball. And Kiefer covering Craig Morton. And another blitz on the play. They didn't get to the passer for the sack, but they did deflect the football. Well, here it is. The ball is on the 13-yard line. Dartmouth courageously trying to punch it into that end zone, trailing 21 to nothing here in the second quarter. And Gary Trank will say, let's not have a score. Well, you can bet on that. Because... The discipline has to prevail this week and next week and for the rest of the season. 2.25 to go in the first half back in the moment. 
Well, Jim O'Gara is going to be given another chance by Joe Yukika, the head coach of Dartmouth there in the blue shirt. O'Gara is one for three on points after touchdown this year, and he's eight for three on field goals. He missed one earlier from 22. This will be about a 30, I'm going to say 32 yard attempt, maybe 31. He's got to kick better than that in practice here. He would not be kicking it right now. Kicks it straight away, and it is not good. Shanked it off to the right side, and he changed the side. He missed it. <laughs> well, I want to feel sorry for O'Gara because it's always tough to go back to that bench, and you know the guys kind of look away from you a little bit. And, well, one coach is sympathetic. It's okay, buddy. But you know that in practice he's been hitting him, or he would not be playing in the games, and. Uh, just doesn't quite have the confidence yet, but when you keep listening, uh, it's very difficult to build that confidence. Let's take a look at some stories here. And uh, Yale is leading Arnie now by four in the second quarter. Right up the middle, blasts Chuck Smith. Twelve very quick yards by Chuck Smith. And he's well rested. Uh, Paul has been in the game for him, so he now is keen to run again. First down on the 32-yard line. Don Hughes has gone in as a split in. Up in the hole opens up for Smith. Got seven more quick yards for Chuck. You know, he's just a junior this year out of Strongsville, Iowa. He went to the Naval Academy Prep School. So he's got one more year to go. <laughs> Fact that you're looking for the speed to break it. The determined running. And we'll let you look at some more scores uh, from around the country as Freeman made the stop on Chuck Smith. Some interesting scores there. Wake Forest has had to come from behind in that game with Virginia. Wake Forest looking impressive last week against Army. Fourth quarter, mission 58 seconds to go in that game. North Carolina leading Georgia Tech, and we'll try to give you that final here in a moment. You get it? First down, we have a minute and 16 seconds to go here in this first half, and Sniffen gets it into big green territory at the 45 as Rusty Gardner and Jeff Lee make the stop. Big senior out of the stomach. Maryland. First throw to the tight end. The tight end will be open. Take a look at it again. Burn dropping back, no pressure. Fine sniffing off the line of scrimmage, kind of overlooked, wide open. Again, right in the middle of the sniffing, I see that kind of coverage, and they say, wow, that's pretty inviting. Rusty Gardner and John Winslow making the stop on him. The game is nine on the play, and maybe calls timeout to 58 seconds to go, wanting to get that 28 points on the scoreboard. I, I don't blame him. You know, with, with somebody like Craig Morton in the arm of Gavinelli, um, that could be dangerous with a long pass. The last two times that Thomas had the ball, they moved it very well, and uh, they've been stopped after going deep into dark, maybe uh, territory. And I don't believe that they can run the ball effectively enough to really put a lot of pressure on them, but the combination Gavinelli and Morton is truly effective. Let's take a look at some Big Ten scores. Uh, Indiana and Northwestern, the uh, Hoosiers out in front. Uh, the Wildcats, 24 to nothing. They still have an team going for the fourth straight in the third period. Michigan State over Iowa, 7 to nothing. And of course, Oklahoma not having too hard a time as anticipated against Kansas State after taking uh, the lump last week against Miami. Down to the last 58 seconds to go in this first half. And the whole is open momentarily for Chuck Smith. That's all he needs. And the first down and stops the clock. Rusty Gardner has been very much in evidence today. Number 53, a senior out of Romeo, Illinois, Romeo Villa, Illinois. Without huddling. Somebody broke too quickly, and Byrne, I believe, will have a procedure finally. The coaches always like the chance, Bill, to use your hurry up offense. And, uh, you need to practice it. I'm sure that. Maybe he has practiced it, but they haven't become disciplined enough yet in doing it. They jumped outside. Again, let me remind you that next week, it'll be Navy against Air Force. And I tell you, we are anticipating 
As we said, a real war. It's going to be a great football game. Both teams can move the football, but both have very sound defenses. Navy's been impressive here today. That's a great defensive play by Mike Campanelli. I thought he really had it. Uh, he moved in perfect timing. And the ball just kind of dribbles off his fingers. See Byrne dropping back. Campanelli moving in now. It's in front of the receiver. But then he cannot quite hold the ball. I think Mike Ray did a pretty good job seeing what was happening. He just reached up and grabbed his belt and pulled him down. 34 seconds of the first half. Draw play to Chuck Smith. We get out of bounds to stop the clock with 27 seconds to go. Rob Tommy and Brett Matthews, 44 and 40 respectively, making the stop. And that last play was a good picture of matched speed. And Smith has got the speed. Coming up at halftime, we'll be taking a look at last week's highlights of the Army Wake Forest game and Navy Lehigh game. Interesting interview coming up with Admiral Trost. And here's Vernon being chased. Throws it deep. Gary Grigley got ahead of the whole law, but it looked like Campanelli could hold it long enough to make the interception in the end zone, but he didn't. And it stops the clock with 20 seconds. Campanelli was just too sure of making the catch and took his eye off the ball as we see Vernon dropping back, throwing. And he overthrows the receiver. Campanelli, had he taken one more step before he reached for the ball, would have made the interception. Rick, where are you? I'm right in the end zone behind Campanelli, and does he do a good job of reacting to the football? He is an excellent pass defender. He gets a jump on the ball. Bob Sunderland has gone in to try this uh, field goal. Picking it from about the 40-yard line. It is good. So Bob Sunderland who had uh, given way to Von Dukas, was given an opportunity, and he gives maybe three more points. And 24 push-ups, gentlemen. seconds to go in this first half maybe is out in front of Dartmouth 24 to nothing even the co-eds women cadets can do those push-ups you're right looking for that uh, Final on the Georgia Tech North Carolina. They don't have that one yet. Ohio State leading Illinois at halftime, 14 to nothing. Almost. Terry Phyllis getting the ball up to the 40 yard line. And it looks like the Big Green will have one, one play left here. Good return, good run back. Phyllis followed the blocking well, found the daylight. Well, I guess you don't have to be a genius to figure out what Gavin always going to do here. You well, might run a draw or a screen, but I doubt it. <laughs> With an arm like that, you only can throw the ball 70 yards. Well, you're right, he goes to terrain on the draw. And that will end the first half. And the cannon salute to the midshipmen who have treated this homecoming crowd here at the Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium in Annapolis to a 24 to nothing lead over the big green of Dartmouth. And as has become tradition for our telecast, we try to get a word with the leading coach. And now let's go down to Rick Forzano. Rick, 
I have uh, Gary Tranquil with me. Gary, I know it's 24 to zip, but uh, coaches are never satisfied. Your thoughts of the first half? Well, I thought we were, we were a little sluggish, Rick, on uh, both sides of the ball, and uh, and Wharton's just eating us alive. He's caught about four passes, and three of them have been real big ones, and we got to do something to control him, and we got to do a little better job offensively controlling the ball. We, we had one here with a chance to go in, and we dropped it on about the seven yard line. So we've got to play with a little more intensity, a little more emotion in the second half. Good luck to you in the second half, Gary. Thank you. All right, Rick, thank you. And uh, we'll look forward to the appearance of the midshipmen in the second half of play. And we'll be back with our halftime activities here at the Memorial Stadium in Annapolis, Maryland, where Navy is leaving Garden 24 to nothing at halftime. It's halftime here at the Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium in Annapolis. And we at the Freedom Football Network welcome you to this telecast today as we have all year long with the Service Academies, Army, Navy, and Air Force. Let's bring you up to date on the cadets of Army. Army playing Yale today, but last week the cadets were engaged with a real battle with Wake Forest. West Point, New York, and Army was set to take on the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest. But the skies and the fate of the cadets were cloudy on this fall day. With three offensive starters sidelined due to injuries, Army still took the ball confidently down the field in the first series of the game. This pitch to Jones took them to the Wake Forest 18. Wake Forest got the ball after a missed field goal, and five first downs took them to the Army 3. The handoff is to Reeves, and Wake Forest goes up 7 to nothing. Army scored next after a back-and-forth battle. With 2-12 left in the half, quarterback Tory Crawford avoided a Wake Forest ambush to score on the keeper. Nine plays and 67 yards later, quarterback Elkins completes to Reeves for the second Wake Forest touchdown. The halftime score is Wake Forest 14, Army 7. Army's second play of the third quarter, and Crawford fumbles. Wake Forest recovers on the Army 23. Wake Forest cashes in on the next play. McGill goes up the middle on the draw and scores. Two more touchdowns, and Wake Forest had a 35-7 lead at the end of the third quarter. Early in the fourth quarter, Army scores on a three-yard Tory Crawford run. But it won't be enough. Two Army fumbles, two Wake Forest touchdowns, and the game is over. Final score, Wake Forest 49, Army 14. Normally fielding a passing offense, Wake Forest ran the ball 62 times for 325 yards and five touchdowns on the ground. Army's wishbone was held to a mere 175 rushing yards and no third down conversions. Next week, the cadets travel to New Haven to take on the Bulldogs of Yale. And Army is engaged in quite a battle with the Bulldogs, and we'll bring you up to date on that game very shortly. But now, let's talk about Navy and what happened last week, and I think there's no better man to ignite the fuse on that one than former Navy coach, Rick Brazano. 14 of those 24 points you see on the scoreboard were scored today by Chuck Smith, the great running back, the substitute for the great Nat McCallum, excuse me. But I'll tell you, Chuck Smith last week against Lehigh, four touchdowns, three running the football, one pass catching. A great back, and he'll, he's having a great day today, but watch him next week when Air Force plays Navy. Lehigh rolled into Annapolis with their sights set on the midshipmen of Navy. Coming off a tough loss the week before, Navy lowered their guns and sunk the engineers. Early in the game, Navy quarterback Bill Byrne screened to Chuck Smith, scored, and Navy was off and running. The midshipmen put on the pressure. Lehigh fumbled, and Navy recovered. First and ten on the Lehigh 21. Who got the ball? Why, Chuck Smith, of course, and he scored his second of four touchdowns. Navy had five interceptions on the day for 123 yards. In the second quarter, Vince McBeth grabbed this Lehigh pass and returned it 57 yards for a Navy score. The point after was no good, but Navy still had a 20 to nothing lead. Later in the second quarter, Navy's Tom Bowman made this interception. He lateraled to McBeth, who put Navy on Lehigh's 42. Burns passed to Saunders, made it first and goal on the six. Again, it was Navy's power man Smith taking the pitch out into the end zone. Navy's commanding lead is 27 to nothing at the half. 
Navy's first series of the second half. Burns passed to Smith for 23 yards, and a first down set up the next Navy score. This time, Burns threw to split end Saunders, and Navy was up by 34. Dolan intercepted another Harris throw, and Navy marched this one down to the four. Chuck Smith's final touchdown of the day made it Navy 41, Lehigh nothing. Navy called on their second team to finish off the game, and they held Lehigh for the shutout. The midshipmen dominated the engineers on this day with 443 total yards to Lehigh's 234. Chuck Smith tied a Navy single game record with four touchdowns and 24 points. Next week, Navy heads west to battle the Falcons of Air Force. Right now, at the Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium, it's the Navy Drum and Bugle Corps entertaining the homecoming crowd. And they have been treated to some fireworks here in the first half, with Navy out in front of Dartmouth by the score of 24 to nothing. We'll be back with more halftime activities right after this message. Gara will kick off. Vernon Wallace and Chuck Smith are deep. Vernon Wallace at the 12. And up to the 30. So let's uh, set the offense with Bill Byrne, the quarterback, number 15, Chuck Smith, the running back. Tony Hollinger will go in the place of Byrne Wallace, number 43, who trots off the field, and the fullback will be John McKenna. Mike Ray will be the split end, number 33, and John Smith in the tight end, number 80. First down on the 30, Navy leading 24 to nothing to begin the second half. Pass off the fingertips. The intended for John McKenna, the fullback. Defensively, Baelish, Ramsey, McBride, Muehlhauser, and Lee. Rusty Gardner, Jeff Matthews, and Nigel Eckern. The cornerbacks are Campanelli and Combi, and the free safety is Scott Russell. Second and ten. Gives it to Chuck Smith. That's pretty well diagnosed by Nigel Eckern, number 55. The halftime stats are very, very clear. Yards passing are reasonably close, but the total domination of the Navy running attack is the reason that the score is 24 to nothing. Four, Tony Hollinger. Incomplete. Now Chuck Smith had a great first half. A couple of touchdowns and in rushing. Quite a bit above the entire Dartmouth team. But I'll tell you one thing, he's not the leading uh, ground gainer of gainer of yards. Martin had 174 in pass receiving. Combi. Fair catch, 27 to 28 yard line. That's a final now on the North Carolina Georgia Tech game. The Tar Heels win it 21 to 20. We'd like to welcome the station's WCL TV in Cleveland, Ohio, as well as KXTL TV in Sacramento, California, to the Freedom Football Network today. First down for Dartmouth, holding Navy after kicking off of them to begin this third quarter of play. Corain off the right side. To the 35. Hit by Mike Perrin and Greg Stefanon. What's up, Rick? In talking to one of the trainers of Dartmouth, uh, he made the statement that they are really being bothered by the humidity here. So we want to watch to see how this football team performs in the third quarter. And if they do get awfully tired. 
Now, I don't imagine they get this kind of humidity up in Hanover, New Hampshire. And pretty hard to uh, to come into 91% humidity and temperature plus 80 degrees. Cavanelli and Morton steps out of bounds after making the reception in enemy territory at the 48-yard line. Oh, this kid is something, isn't he, Bob? He is beautiful. He's got speed, but he's got the sure hands to go with the speed, and he's got great concentration on the ball as we see Cavanelli throwing again and hitting him just before he goes out of bounds. In the first half, Cavanelli was 9 and 18 for 185 yards. So that's a 20.6 average per completion, which gives you some idea of the strength deep for this Dartmouth passing, passing attack. So far, maybe he's kept him out of the end zone. Two missed field goals have kept him off the scoreboard. Good faking, but look out from behind. Number 72, Bob Plants came roaring in to stop Gabinelli before he could even throw the ball. And that's the first sack of the game by either team. But uh, maybe he's beginning to put more pressure all the time. I think that they are wearing down the Dartmouth team. They're so much bigger. The arm had just barely moved forward, so it's an incomplete pass, not a fumble. Well, he took an awful shot, didn't he? Yes, he did. Oh, well, he buried the helmet right underneath the red cage. Morton's caught nine passes now, though, for 191 yards. He's got an alley on the blitz. Gets his man over the center of the line. Matt Drury, the tight end. Not enough for the first down, but a game of about seven on the play. That's an awfully good read by Gavin Ellie when that puts his arm. Somebody's open the truth with the tight end. He stayed in there very calmly. We watched Gavin Ellie drop back again. Here comes the blitz, as you can see. But he lays the ball out there to Drury, the tight end, who makes the reception. Good read, good catch. Army now leading Yale after trailing. One to 18 at halftime. Force one for the four last over Utah, 45-35. Gavinelli, Army's hit, but he still got rid of the ball to Ernie Terrain. And he's short of a first down by just about a yard. Mike Heron covering on the play. And it's decision time. And I think it's a fairly easy decision. They may go for it. I don't think so. Gavinelli's going out. Fourth and one. So they stopped Army without, pardon Navy, without a first down on their first possession. Uh, I think they have a little more confidence that defense is learning to play against this potent Navy attack. Well, Kevin Griffin now with a 41-yard average today, which is about nine better than his normal. They'll try to put Navy deep in its territory. Angles it toward the sidelines, and a high floater comes down, and a fair catch called for by Mark Curley at about the 13-yard line. Well, Navy will take over the football. They were stopped the first time after getting the second half kickoff. We'll see what the big green defense will do this time against Chuck Smith and company. Bill Fleming, but I don't consider it great for Zano back at Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium in Annapolis, Maryland, for this first meeting between Navy and Dartmouth since 1954. The series began in 1949. Navy has won three. There's been a tie, but Dartmouth never won it. But it doesn't look like the Dean Green are going to do it today unless they get a miracle here in this third and fourth quarter. Chuck Smith driving off for about seven yards. Tom Ramsey making the stop. Really an amazing ball carry because he didn't have a lot of daylight on that uh, particular play. But he weaves his way in there and just makes the little cracks open up for him to pick up seven yards when it didn't really look like he had it much. Let's watch it again and you can see what I mean. So I say he just kind of leaves it in there. Hides behind that big rock and tackle of Brennan and just kind of finds his way, picks up 70 yards on a play which didn't really look like it had very much in it. Look at that hole. First down. You mentioned Brennan. I think it's kind of interesting to uh, talk about uh, Joe Brennan, number 74, who plays offensive tackle. He's 275 pounds. He's a junior this year. And uh, since he's six feet four, the limit there for weight when he goes into the fleet will be 230. So somewhere along the line, after he finishes his senior year, he's going to have to lose 45 pounds. Diet time. <laughs> First down, on the 24. Completed. Royce, that's Don Hughes, who plays at Troy Saunders, number 91. 
play off the split end. A very good misdirection that time. It was a counter fake by Byrne, but he kept the ball, set up the pass beautifully, and picked up almost the first down of the play, about nine yards. Ten minutes, 53 seconds to go to third quarter. Maybe out in front, 24 to nothing. Adam McKenna, the fullback, gets the first down easily to the 39-yard line. Jeff Lee and Nigel Eckert making the stop. It's a very well-conceived uh, Navy offense. They've got good balance, and they have excellent play-action passing. That's Fred Lucas, number 92. can find that opening if there's just a small piece of paper he knows where it is. Well, let's go down to Rick Fozano for a moment. Well, Bud Wilkinson said that uh, Navy has a well-conceived offense, and I agree, and I would not be surprised to see Burn to go deep here in, in this series. I'm wondering how many Air Force scouts are here today, gentlemen. As many as they can get. Yeah, I would think so. Uh, Chuck Smith in high gear here, getting the first down at the 47-yard line. You know, Air Force did a magnificent job of, Steve, of defensing Steve Bartello last week and holding him to only about 53 yards. Uh, they will have an equally tough task with Chuck Smith next week. And it's a little different offense to uh, play against because Bartello was the only back uh, in the backfield and there was no one to block him and there's not much anybody to fake to. If the passing does not go as it did not, then it's tough for Bartello to run. Well, he got three touchdowns last night as Colorado State upset BYU 24-21. So Bartello came rolling back and he's good for the Heisman. I think Chuck Smith is truly everything that a great running back should be. And the tailback can go anywhere along the offensive front, which is one of the great advantages of using the eye formation. The fullback also can block for him, and so can the pulling lineman, because he's about six or seven yards deep, which gives them an opportunity to get in front of the ball carrier. He has 22 carries today for 141 yards and two touchdowns. This is number 23, as he goes out of bounds at the 41-yard line. And he's third down and about two. One thing you don't worry about here, and Rick had mentioned earlier about the humidity for Dartmouth, uh, this Navy team is a well-conditioned team. They had to play eight quarters, they could do it. Practiced uh, 90 degree temperature and 90 degree humidity on both Tuesday and Wednesday, so they're well-conditioned for this one. Well, you can see all the whites are out today. Thank heaven for that, eh? Yes. Because I think the Blues are supposed to come in, what, October 1st? Whatever the commanding officer says. Oh, well, it'll be next Monday. Good defensive play that time. The Dartmouth team is continuing to battle very, very hard. McBride making the stop. Middle guard, number 52, out of Union Lake, Michigan. So it brings up... Well, there's a player down on the field. On it. it brings up fourth down, but the Navy man is hurt there. See, that's Tim Brunn, number 65, offensive left guard. The junior from Pepper Pike, Ohio. Well, Virginia defeated Wake Forest today. Big win for George Wells. Yes, well, well, coach here at the Naval Academy. Eight minutes, 23 seconds to go in the third quarter. Navy out in front, 24 to nothing. Or rather, it only been a sticky afternoon after rain showers this morning for a couple of hours. But no rain from the time the kickoff occurred. Very Smith. Oh, what a block. He gets down that sideline. Look out. Bangs heads at the six with Mike Campanelli. Throwing that block was John McKenna, the fullback, who was running out in front of him. And McKenna is one of the reasons that Smith is having such a great year. You see the pitch, and once McKenna, just in the left corner of the screen, bingo, he knocks his man down, that opens it down the sidelines, and Smith has got the great acceleration and burst of speed, and then he lowered the shoulder. Wham! Almost put it in the end zone. Campanelli did knock him out of bounds. We take another look at 
Boy Scholar lowers the shoulder as he gets down the sidelines when Campanelli comes across now to get to him. First and goal on the six. And McKenna gets the ball. After having blocked for his buddy, he gets it to about the two or three yard line. Baelish knocking him down along with Eckern. This is a very impressive maybe offensive football team. The defense will get a little bit different type of attack when they meet the Air Force pushbone next week. 34 yards of that run by Chuck Smith, by the way. That will swell his daily total up to about 170. Penetration made by Greg McBride, the middle guard. When you're digging in down the goal line, there's always over anxiousness, and we see right in the middle of the screen McBride, and he did move, there was no offensive movement in the Navy line, so illegal procedure penetration offside by McBride. Moves the ball to the one. Navy leading 24 to nothing, 7.25 to go in the third quarter. And the midshipmen are threatening with him. Second down. Here's McKenna, ready to get close touchdown. John McKenna is getting his first touchdown of the season. Senior from Marlton, New Jersey. And now, it looks like either 30 or 31 uh, push-ups will be attempted by the Plebes. The Dartmouth team makes a great defensive effort here. They haven't given up at all. They just don't quite have the muscle and strength. But you can see how determined they were to stop McKenna, and he was able to edge the ball into the end zone. Holding for a punt. It's up and good. And it's nearly 31. And that was one. And we still have 7 minutes and 15 seconds to go in this third quarter of play. Uh, quickly, let's uh, review some of the scores. We have that uh, Army Yale game that we gave you a little bit earlier. This score is 31 to nothing, as we mentioned. That's the halftime score. Now, quickly, Rutgers uh, and Penn State. The Liberty Lions winning it today, 35 to 7. No surprise there. And over Columbia, Princeton trailing Brown. And we get set for the kickoff. Sunderland will do the voting. Hands oh, a big high kick. Coming down to Chris Pollard up to six. Up to the 20. There again is that hole. Oh, the big, pretty good runbacks today by the Dartmouth team. Making the stop is Len Armstrong, number 31. More scores that are coming up here. We're going to marry over Harvard. And this one in the fourth quarter. Wake Forest coming back to take the lead over Virginia, 28-27. Holy Cross over Colgate in the fourth. Dave Gabinelli, senior quarterback from St. Louis, setting his team now. And you can keep your eye on Craig Morton, number 25. Hand off to Ernie Terrain, trying that short side for a couple. This is the final. This must have been a great ball game today. Back and forth, and North Carolina winning it over Georgia Tech, 21-20. And, as I mentioned earlier, South Carolina is giving Nebraska all it wants today, 13-10 at the end of three. J.D. Cook is now on the lineup for McBeth at linebacker, number 17. Well, I'll tell you what happened on that. Gabinelli was looking, and he saw Morton stumble. If we, uh, if we have the replay, you'll we'll see what it was a very wise move by Gabinelli. And Gabinelli is dropping back to slight play action. He's rolling. But now right then, he saw that Morton, his receiver, had stumbled. He wisely pulled the ball down because when you throw at a receiver who has stumbled, you can get the interception very easily. Both linebackers now are out of the air. Sitting with us, and the first is gone, and Gavin Alley 
has no place to go. Number 37, that was Mark Pimple, Pimple rather, who was in there in place of Tom Dolan. And I think Gary Frankville is giving an opportunity to younger players to play. Kevin Griffith has come in the lineup for Dartmouth. Uh, here in the third. He gives him a good chance to test his defense and from a theory standpoint as well as from the standpoint of how well each man executes. We'll take it at midfield. And gets it to about the 47 yard line. Very good coverage that time by Dartmouth. <laughs> well, maybe he has pretty good field position here. Good play. Curtis Brown blasting through. You know, you have to have very quick feet to be able to change direction that quickly and still keep your footing, and he did a fine job. He fakes the wide pitch here. You can see Mitch how well he fakes it, and then hands the ball off to Brown just as he finishes with the fake. Dartmouth widened to the outside of the left side of your screen, left that whole wide open big game by Brown. 18. He was open, but uh, Mish did not do a good job of putting the ball on the numbers. Well, Mish really uh, has been a great competitor. He makes no bones about the fact he'd like to be the starter. He had a great day, not only against Army, but he had 307 yards passing against South Carolina last year. So he did a good job. Back to that same play, and Curtis Brown gets it to the 15 yard line. Captain Rusty Gardner, number 53, making the stop. Curtis Brown's got uh, amazing speed. Looks to me that he's a little quicker than McKinley. I know he's not quite as big and strong, and uh, but when you come in after the defense is a little bit tired, your quickness pays off. Okay, one thing you kind of can do, and that is block. Well, we've seen a couple of great examples today on Chuck Smith runs. successful beautiful team play by the entire Navy lineup <laughs> not the class of 59 on our hat this is home coming in and you can see the toss Brown leads all cuts up inside and breaks it back to the outside and there's no down player there that can reach him and he goes into the end zone standing up 37 to nothing and from Lucas Puts it up and makes it 38. So the midshipmen, with 3.53 to go in this third quarter, have a 38 to nothing lead as they reload. Now these are tough times for Coach Yukika, the Dartmouth squad. They missed two field goals. They had moved the ball very well. With Campbelli throwing to Morton, who was proven that he's one of the great receivers this year in college football, but uh, you're down, how do you keep your driver up and you just know that you have got to make your best effort all the time, which is what the game is all about, and you have got to be proud of your tradition and stay in there giving it a shot every time they snap the ball as we take a look at Coach Uchika, and he's not happy, but uh, this team is trying hard. Well, he's got a great receiver in Craig Morton, and I'm sure we'll see a lot of him the rest of the season. Next Saturday on the Freedom Football Network, the Air Force Falcons will host these midshipmen of Navy, and uh, that will be coming to you from Falcon Stadium in Colorado Springs. Game time, 2 o'clock Eastern. We invite you to check your local listings for the game time in your particular area. We've been looking forward to this game all season long, and it should be quite a battle. This call. Dartmouth taking over on the 26-yard line as the sun once again comes out here to make things just even a little more sticky. And the Dartmouth running attack has just not been able to handle the big, strong Navy defenders. Where Donald Lennon, Plants, Blazes, and Van Horn are 
big, strong linebackers are all quick players. This is a very physical football team. 347 to go in the third. Navy leading 38 to nothing over the Dodgers. Gabinelli. He throws in on him. Victory secondary. Before there wasn't anybody even close to being open. The running attack uh, can't threaten anything. The defensive coaches feel that we might as well go ahead and get some or cover some, uh, but there's no reason to not make up our mind before the ball is snapped. Are we going to come with everybody or are we going to cover with people? And that makes it hard for the passing attack. Second down, the ball on the 18-yard line. Couldn't really get very much there. When the blitz is on there, there's nobody possible to cover Mr. Brown because they're coming through every single gap when you have seven men coming down the blitz. Good call, but uh, not against our defense. One thing it will do for Army today is to give Lee's defenders a, a great deal of, I would say, confidence. As they go against Jim Tomorrow in the Air Force next week. Gavinelli. Well, one on one, he couldn't beat Mark Pinto out of there. Sophomore out of Strongsville, Ohio, number 37, and made a fine defensive play. And he had quite enough speed to turn the corner. As you can see, the linebacker moving on out. Foot race. That ball wins the foot race and gets to Gavinelli. And it brings up fourth down and very long. All the way back to the 13-yard line and the point to gain is for 36. Kevin Griffin, in the end zone. Stackhouse is back. the ball at the 46-yard line. Chris Kett, number eight and two, may very well have gotten it. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Another turnover. As we watch that house, the ball simply goes right between his arms and his chest, hits him, free ball, Dartmouth covering the kick, he covers the ball, and they have it first down. Especially Jack and Hill gets credit for it. Number 58, John Jackamick, a senior from Burke, Michigan. First down for Dutton. On the road in 46. Now well, there's a great defensive play. As Ernie Torrain tries to turn the corner, and John Fuller, number 40, is there to greet him. Very tough to move anybody on the defensive line or linebackers and the Dartmouth running attack simply cannot get them tracked. We'd like to welcome stations KOOG TV in Salt Lake City and Vietnam and Cast Cable Systems in Dayton, Ohio to the Freedom Football Network. Well, that was a pretty good defensive play by Stephen and right over the back of James Swart. He played it thoroughly, and the ball is up in the air. Both men have equal right to it. He closed on the ball and got his hand on the ball before he hit the receiver. In addition to the pass cable systems, we'd like to welcome Pro-Am Sports Pass, the cable system in Detroit, to our network of stations today. We hope you are enjoying the game and that you will be joining us next week for Navy and Air Force. That is the Commander-in-Chief Trophy will be on the line this season between the three service academies. Here's Gavinelli. 46 seconds to go in the third quarter. Incompleted pass, Ernie Torrain. The Dartmouth uh, pass protectors are doing a very good job of making a very tough rush when you have seven men coming, as Navy has had on almost all of the last snaps. It's very difficult to give the quarterback time to throw, but they've done a reasonably good job of protecting Gavinelli. Here's Kevin Griffin, junior from Chicopee, Massachusetts. 
Mark Sterling back. What a good high kick. Pretty much here on the return. Where he catches the ball at the 16-yard line. I don't think Jerry Trinkle was all that happy with Stackhouse on that last one when he took his eyes off the ball, and that's the reason Furley came in the lineup. So he, Coach Trinkle thinks that uh, Furley is one of the truly fine players that he has. From his safety position, he made 12 unassisted tackles going into this game, and has had seven assists for 19. When you're a safety man, and you're contributing that much to stopping the running attack of the opponent to uh, you're playing your role beautifully. Now with 33 seconds to go in the third quarter, Mish hands off to Curtis Brown and doesn't get much. That Ish McLaughlin, number 94 in the lineup, a defensive tackle for without with Big Green. And you have to give Dartman credit for not going for the same kind of a fake two or three times in a row. That's the play that Brown broke so well on the last touchdown drive. Georgia defeated Ole Miss today, 14 to 10. Of course, Florida didn't get the game on those scores. Or you'd be calling it. Dallas comes to Dow Hall. Hall has a touchdown to his credit today, his first of the season. And we have come to the end of three quarters of play. And the midshipmen of Navy have a big lead, 38 to nothing. Looks like both teams will be in there with victories this weekend going into that puzzle. Air Force coming from behind over Utah last night, 45 to 35, and Navy with a big lead over Gardner here, 38 to nothing. Army is leading Yale, 34 to 18 at the end of three. Penn State beat Rutgers today, 31 to 6. Penn over Columbia, 42 to 7, wins your final. Brown over Princeton, 24 to 10. Richmond over uh, Boston University in the fourth, 28 to 8. Lafayette leading Cornell, 7 to 3. Brady Mary over Harvard, 24 to nothing in the fifth. Over the middle, nice completion. Tony, Troy Sanders is out of bounds at the 43-yard line. He scored a 55-yard touchdown earlier. This one goes for 19. The linebackers reacted, but missed, missed the tackle, as you see Mitch dropping back. Set, no pressure, hits Sanders on the crossing pattern, and you can see the linebackers kind of bump into each other, knock each other off, which gives him lots of room to run. And as he goes out of bounds, let me remind you that the former Navy coach, George Walsh, had a throw today. Virginia defeated Wake Forest 30-28. to He hit the ground. Curtis Brown touched at about the 42-yard line. Other scorers, Holy Cross over Colgate, 16 to 12 in the fourth. The final, North Carolina over Georgia Tech, 21 to 20. Alabama leading Notre Dame in the first period, 7 to nothing. Nebraska over South Carolina, 13 to 10 in the third. Here's the final, Georgia over Ole Miss, 14 to 10. The LSU is leading Florida, 21 to 17 in the third. Minnesota over Purdue, 24 to nothing in the third. And Iowa, Michigan State are tied, 13 to 14 at halftime. We're in the fourth quarter here as Michael Lewis has Curtis Brown struggling for the first down. Hey, Curtis Brown wants to get that starting job away from John McKenna. I'm just calling him under. He's got great balance and he has a quick, quick change of direction. Let's watch him again. This is an art from ball carrying. Set a little weave and then shake off the linebacker and then twist past the other linebacker. Find a little daylight and it takes the safety man to bring him down. Scott Russert. Down. Well, there's Don Hall just changing direction nicely. Leading his way to the 35-yard line in the game of nine on the play. Joe Raver bringing him down. Dartmouth missing some tackles. When you uh, have the little run to say, you know, it wouldn't feel so badly if our team just didn't have an attack. It makes a big difference who we are trying to tackle. <laughs> Second and one. And Brown breaks outside once again, working away from Barnett. Arms and legs. And gets it to the 16-yard line, 18 yards on the play. And the running attack is so potent that when they use the 
play action passes. The receivers are bound to be open. That's what it's again. And you can see the quick handoff from Brown. Just the drift, drift to the outside. And then finds daylight. Accelerates into the secondary and picks up the first down on the play. He's a fine, fine runner. Got a lot of mileage out of the field backs today. 75 yards for Brown. He goes all He will not be stopped. He goes to the one-yard line. Right now, he was trying to get bring him down. That'll bring up first and goal to go. And when the defense gets just a little bit tired, the offense has fresh men in the game. And Brown and Paul are both backups to the starters of Kevin and Smith. Puts an added burden on the defense when they're tired, and their speed of reaction has faded a little bit. Well, that'll be about a 90 page scouting report, I think, from the Air Force about this Navy team. It looks to be two or three deep in front of the ball, and uh, now it's a question whether the officials are going to say that he had broken the plane of the goal line before he fumbled, or had he not? Let's wait for the decision. We can see the play again. Pat Donnelly is the carrier, and from this angle, of course, we can't tell, but you can see the ball go up in the air, and it's anybody's ball, depending on what the officials call it. Rick Rizzoni remembers the name Donnelly. You know that. The Naval Academy recovered that fumble. Second down the man. It's going to be awfully close, but I don't think you made it in. Not just the way there, and that's very aggressive goal line defense and a tribute to the Dartmouth team. Running driving out, and he's up in the air. Slam down, coming in, but he didn't have enough leg drive or under the end zone. And the attempt that Dartmouth played beautifully. Well, now two shots to make a foot. That's what's down. First down. First touchdown of the year for him. And that brings the count to 44. Oh boy. With 11 minutes to go, you may have even a few more push-ups you to think about today. We have a, a good conditioning exercise. <laughs> we look at the Cannoneers. Hondukas. For some reason, they uh, want to go to football. They want to. It would have been a little damp, but the field was still wet, even though we've had off and on sunshine, which would help to dry it. 44 to nothing. This is the attempt for 45. Last time these two teams met, two years ago, it was 42 to 7. And now it is good to make it 45 to nothing. And we still have 11 minutes and 25 seconds to go in the fourth quarter from the Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium at Annapolis. One of the impressive things that Navy has showed us today is a depth of performance at the skilled positions, Bud. Yes, they not only uh, have the skilled positions uh, very, very well manned, but uh, I'm enough of a curious fellow to think the skilled positions are along the offensive and defensive lines because if those people operate well, then the skilled people can, or the so-called skilled people can. But they are great running backs, great receivers. This is a fine football team. They'll be tested by the Air Force. Some good returns today, and he almost breaks this one, gets it up to the 31. Let's go down to Rick Forzano, and I mentioned the name Donnelly earlier. Let's go down and go with him. Bud Waddell, number 38, Pat Donnelly. There's another number 38, Chuck Smith, out there, but it isn't too bad either, Pat. He's a great back, Rick. I've been just uh, tremendously impressed with him this year. People may not remember Pat Donnelly, but in my opinion, he was one of the great running backs in Navy history, and I had the great pleasure of recruiting. Any, any regrets about coming to the Naval Academy? Not at all, Rick. I have uh, enjoyed uh, 21 years in the Navy, four years at the Naval Academy, and a couple of years playing football and then with some great players like Roger Starbuck and Tommy Lynch, and uh, with an outstanding, has been an outstanding experience. What about you get that battleship that I uh, sent you, that I told you to get if I recruited you? 
I don't remember that. <laughs> what about your young son? I'll tell you, he fumbled the ball, but he's going to be a good back. Well, I, I hope so. I'm enjoying watching him and going through the, the struggles as he tries to make the team and, and move up into some playing time. It's been, it's been a lot of fun for me, and of course, I'm very proud. Thank you, Pat. You should be proud. Thank you, Jeff. All right, thank you. And uh, congratulations to Pat Donnelly. We enjoy him as a football player, and we enjoy him now as the son follows in the tradition. And the last coming drive was typical of what maybe he's been doing this afternoon. 11 plays, 83 yards, 4 minutes and 11 seconds, and just a methodical move down the field to the touchdown. Rudy Terrain well, has worked awfully hard today for his yards. It won't come easy against this Navy defense. It's so big and so strong. Let it move Gary Stoltz. That's the first time rushing by Dartmouth, which has not happened very often this afternoon. Their passing attack, however, has been very good. Gavinelli has thrown 25 times. He's completed 13 for 218 yards. So that's a good afternoon in the air, and Martin has been an outstanding receiver. Well, it's been a long afternoon as far as the uh, scoreboard operator is concerned. 45 points for Navy. This is how it happens. Smith setting up his own touchdown at a 32-yard run in the first quarter. Came back with a six-yard pass from Byrne for his second touchdown of the day. Also in the second quarter, Troy Saunders broke loose for a 55-yard bomb from Byrne. And then as the story continues, as you can see, it's all the videos all and down and coming uh, into the work here in the sports quarter. Matt Hurley breaks away and almost got loose down to the 31-yard line. That's scoring so many left out to two missed field goals by Dartmouth O'Gara. Had they been able to make those as we look again at the pass to Gurry. They would have been on the board, they wouldn't have threatened him, but Gurry does a great job of twisting, turning, breaking off the safety line, his tackle, and then, of course, he's sandwiched, but it's a big game for the doctor. That opens up for Chris Pollard, the pen is closed, and he is dropped all the way back to the 32. I don't see any lessening of the intensity on the defense, do you? No, I don't see any lessening of the intensity on the offense. And I'm really proud of the Dartmouth team because they've been out of the game for quite some time, but they've not been out of the effort. Oklahoma is leading Kansas State at halftime, 48 to 10, so the Sooners bouncing back. Number one, Miami, of course, is playing Northern Illinois tonight. They're landing on the hurricane, but they shouldn't have too much trouble. Gavinelli has to eat it once again all the way back to the 36 yard line. It's been impossible to pick up that blitz. He's got to dump it off to the receiver who is the hot receiver. Someone is open. And that many men are committing, but that time he didn't have a chance to look up and find the open man. Give Troy Holland, the sophomore from Warner Robins, Georgia. Credit for that track. Third down and about 14. The clock moving with eight minutes to play. The Dartmouth fans hoping it gets uh, mercifully over. Soon. Third one thing, if they could just get on that board. They would do their confidence a lot of good. And here goes Gavin Alley. He just got Martin, but he overthrows it. Bob Martin had a good three steps. Now Martin Armstrong. Much of them uh, hit as often as Gavin Alley has been sacked by that blitz. It does take your timing off just a little bit. You don't sit back there with the confidence and deliver the ball. Martin was open, but he missed it. Time here is called by Dartmouth. So the clock has stopped. Seven minutes, 43 seconds to go in the ball game. And they will be taking up really right where it left off 32 years ago. And they defeated the Big Green 42 to 7. On the way to a great season that year. And a victory over the Old Mission Super Bowl. Next Saturday, 
Chuck Smith and company will invade the Falcon Stadium at the Air Force Academy. Two o'clock Eastern time will be the time of that game. I think it's kind of interesting to speculate on that because the Air Force defense did such a great job on Steve Bartello and on the media to see whether or not the defense can do the same thing with Chuck Smith. What do you think? It's not going to be the same, but uh, Air Force Academy defense is uh, a little bit different than the Dartmouth defense. They got more size, they got more quickness, they got more experience, and above all, they got more confidence. They also have Terry Mackey and Chad Henry. And you can bet that the defense is very cognizant of that fact. Shutting out of the corner, of course, is uh, probably the greatest compliment it can have. And they would like to keep uh, the big green out of that end zone. Today's offensive-minded game, it just doesn't happen that often. Fourth down, 15 to go, and the other is going forward. There's a marker, however, down on the field. Somebody moved, I think, on the offensive line. Uh, as you said, they thought the team was not want to be blank, and so they went all the way down. And fourth round, they have a long average, and it appears like uh, they don't want to punt the ball this time either. It's about fourth and 19. I think they feel it's a left to have some players that was really set up, and I don't know what it is because I haven't seen that weakness thus far in the back of the, um, probably the Navy defense. Again, the blitz was on him. Well, that gives Navy an opportunity now with 7.35 to go to make another offensive thrust into the enemy camp. The ball is on the 46. Colin there is just a sophomore this year and uh, has great potential. Thrust into the enemy camp. The ball is on the 46. Colin there is just a sophomore this year and uh, has great potential. All of them do. Mm -hmm. Ball carrier is Paul Parker, the tailback. He is number three behind Chuck Smith. And all that good speed and when you get the defensive team a little bit tired. Your speed is a fresh pair. Just overmatches them. Play. Solid defense. by the way, number 45. You just heard his father with Rick Pizzano a moment ago. That's got good size, 215 pounds. Just 19 years old. And he's got two more years after this one. Second down. Seven minutes to play. Maybe out in front, 45 to nothing. Mitch is the quarterback and he pitches it deep. Parker is the tailback, gets it to the 29-yard line. Looks like he checked signals that time, expecting Dartmouth to be looking for the sweep. He tossed the ball and confirmed that the sweep was coming as we watched the play from the end zone camera. And you can see that normally goes a sweep, but he cuts it back inside. Times a big, big hole inside as the Dartmouth defense widened to the right side of the screen and picked up again in the play. No 
nobody there. So that brings up second down. Counting both down between the receiver and the quarterback. As you know, the service academies are playing for the commander-in-chief trophy. And this goes to the team that wins the most games in the inter-service rivalry. Last time maybe won it was in 1989. As Air Force is going to see in the last five years. Parker lost to the winner to about the 21-yard line and fumbled the ball. He was covered by Dalton. He did. Yes, he was. Very right. fumble. And I think for all the, the coaching staff that maybe can worry about the result of today's performance, there's three more turnovers. Oh, it looked to me like as he was falling on the ground, that bounced out, but whatever, Comby recovered it. Number 44, Bob Donovan. And so the big green with 6.24 to go in the game has another chance. They want to protect the passer. And they have a new quarterback. Tom Shakeship is Shakeshack, I should say, is the one who's in there now in place of Gavin Ellis. Bringing him along, the opportunity for him to get a little experience uh, from the game is on. It's much, much different than practice. He's only taken three snaps so far. Light sunshine now on this warm, muggy day. It's working motion. Big shaft has a lot to call it. Earlier, Rick Forzano had mentioned the hot, humid day, and I think he has an update on that. Rick? Uh, Bill, I have uh, Red Romo with me, who's been the trainer here for 35 years. You're older than Tecumseh, I know that. What about this humidity affecting the darkness, but not the Navy team? Well, our kids are in pretty good shape, you know. We, uh, we're used to this. The last couple of weeks, we've had this kind of weather, so our kids can handle it. We've got plenty of fluid for them, so there's no problem. What about that high altitude next week at Air Force? Well, you know, we can only go in there for, you know, going into Friday, leave on a Saturday, and we, of course, we had oxygen, we had plenty of so we haven't had any problem, as you remember, Rick, we never had any problem with, uh, with the, you know, the climate there or anything else. Red, thank you very much. Uh, Red Romo, 35 years, the trainer at Navy. Back to you, Bill. All right. I mean, made that point, Bill, about uh, plenty of fluids. Uh, most of the years that I coached and most of the people who played in that era recognized that one of the disciplines in practice was nobody could have a drink of water. And then the Marine Corps did an in-depth study, and this was in the late 50s, and they related the temperature and humidity to how fast you lost your body fluids. And the better chart, and everybody follows that chart now. Yeah, that was almost cool in those days where no fluids were allowed here. Shake shot. Being chased. Dan Snyder making a uh, pursuit. So the option to pass run as he rolls it out. You can see him ready to throw the ball, but no receiver was open, so he pulls the ball back down, turns up field, and once it over, maybe he has just a little more speed than the Dartmouth players. He's about a yard. John Weaver making the stop. Well, I'll tell you, Gary Tranquil is down to about the third and fourth groups. Letting them all have an opportunity to play in this game today. And when you substitute to uh, as he is doing, all the people who get in the game feel that I've got to show the coaches that I should be playing one or two teams higher than I am, so you get total, total all out effort. Picks the Pollard. Well, Pollard shows him something. First down. Gets it up to almost midfield. One of the best winning plays that Dartmouth has had all afternoon. Pollard checks out of the lineup. And as we see him turn up the field, he's got a little more speed, I think, than terrain. At least he appears to. Maybe that he's just fresh on terrain and has been tired, but he's got that desire to make up that little bit of extra iron and put his hand on the ground and fell forward. 
hands that he has into his place and do things ahead of him in the eye. And he gets it across midfield into Navy territory. Clock moving, 2.45 to go. That's been a long afternoon for the big green. I'll tell you this, they're still in there trying to get up there on the scoreboard. I think whenever you face a, a team when you're physically out, man, it uh, can be very demoralizing to you. Uh, I haven't seen any waning of the spirit. Not at all. And it's a great, great tribute to the coaching staff and to the morale of the Breakfast Squad. Take shaft down the middle, intended to pass for a glory. Slatter covering on the play. Once again, a reminder that next week, 2 o'clock Eastern Time, Navy invades Air Force. And we hope you'll join us all along the Freedom Football Network. It should be a great game. It will have a lot of tradition and spirit with it. And uh, we hope to be able to bring you all that excitement from Colorado Springs. Good down. Puts his head down and goes right into that last... And it's a very fine defense. We've talked about it a lot this afternoon. In the fine defense, you've got to control the opponent in front of you. Then you find the ball, and then you move in front of the ball, and the angle of pursuit is what Navy has been doing so well. Because they don't get in behind the ball carrier. They move on the proper angle to be in front of them and to meet him on the line of scrimmage. Well, it's fourth down. Griffin is back to do the punting. Trying to hang it up there and hope that they won't call for a fair catch. Jim Chatfield, rather inexperienced back there, as the deep safety man calls for the fair catch at the 10 and hugs it close to his chest. So, with 1.28 to go in the ball game, maybe we'll take over the football on the 10 yard line. No chance of losing this one. One of the uh, sights there is that the camera pulls back. I think you'll be able to see on the left side, just to the left of that spot, the, uh, the old Capitol building. Yeah, just can't quite see it. Not just there it is. Wasn't that uh, Bud where George Washington was? Uh, yes, it was. Washington. The commander in chief, one of the great, great buildings in the United States of America. Historically marvelous, but also so beautiful. Show it all in. Remember the 11th the quarterback, third string quarterback. <laughs> now checking in is number eight, John Milbers. That's the fourth quarterback. We're down inside a minute now. of the game for today's game for the big green of Dartmouth, Craig Morton, sophomore, who had quite a day, but he surely does. And made nine receptions for 191 yards. He's got a great future. And for maybe other than Chuck Smith, when you saw that on the sidelines. Chuck Smith had a great day today. The junior tailback. He carried the ball 26 times, but off 182 yards in one touchdown. He also made four receptions for 28 yards in one touchdown. Great day for Chuck. So $1,000 will be contributed to the General Scholarship Fund of Dartmouth College. On behalf of Chevrolet, and $1,000 goes to the Navy Memorial Fund in the name of Chuck Smith for their outstanding play today from Chevrolet. Congratulations, gentlemen. The ball game is over. Navy has defeated Dartmouth 45 to nothing in a very impressive show, offensively and defensively. And the players, in a nice display of sportsmanship, will mingle now on the field, each one uh, shaking the other's hand. It's quite a moment there. As the Navy hymn now will be played and sung by this brigade of midshipmen, Navy Blue and Gold.
Oh, you have some breakfast today, 45. <laughs>